us your name and where are you from? Uh, my name is Mary Lou Martinez and I'm from the Tri-Cities. Thank you. Mary Lou, how did you come about uh, uh, Hunger Generation? And can you share a little bit of your salvation story with us? Uh, okay. Um, so I got invited by my coworkers, uh, Katrina and uh, Vicky. <laughs> and um, it was kind of just like, just a casual thing, you know, like um, I went to school in Missouri for a year and a half and I just recently moved back. So I was just kind of wanting to get to know like more people and I had never really had like friends that were girls. So I thought it was kind of cool that they invited me to um, the Valentine's banquet. So they're just, um, they're like, well, you should come to the Wednesday service to get to know people. And I was like, okay. So <laughs> it wasn't really anything like I just like, I've gone to youth groups. I've gone to church before, but I didn't really like expect it to be how it was you know like I said earlier it was like going up on like to a mountain or whatever and then like I was like oh yeah I want to see the view whatever and then they're like okay and then like let's jump and then they just like let me fall and I say that just because it was just so emotional for me like I like I was dealing with all these emotions and I thought it was just me but can you tell us a little bit uh, of your background? What family you're coming from? I know you mentioned to me earlier. Mm -hmm. um, so my mom was a, pretty much a single parent her whole life, and I'm the fifth of six children. And so it was kind of it was kind of hard. I had a lot of trust issues when it came to relationships, either with just people in general, but mainly with men. Like I. I didn't really trust guys. I hated guys for a very long time, to be honest, um, which led me to Russell and... What, what co caused that uh, hate towards men? Um, so when I was younger, I would see my mom get abused by my stepdad. So it was just something I just, it was really hard for me to let go of. So um, I, like once I gave my life to God, like I kind of just, like I... I was a Christian before, but I, like, when I went to college, I kind of just, you know, like, I, my goal was to go and get out of here. I did. I graduated. I got accepted to every school I applied to, so I thought, like, after I reached my goal, it was like I was lost, and I got into, like, partying and just bad, bad crowd, and I, And you mentioned that you were wrestling. Can you tell us about it a little bit? I started when I was a junior. And um, it was kind of more of a challenge because I wanted to get in shape for track and there was nothing else. I'm not a good dancer, not a good basketball player, so that was my only option. But I, I really wanted to prove everyone wrong because they just saw me as this fragile little thing. And I wanted it to finish it off and I ended up getting a scholarship um, my senior year to go to Missouri Baptist University. And um, I ended up taking fourth at state my, my senior year just being a <laughs> second year wrestler. So, and when you moved to Missouri for college, how was your life over there, and why did you come back to Trash Cities? Well, of course, when, you, when you're a freshman, it's fun, and then reality hits. I started having to cut weight. Um, I was a starter for my team, so I had to cut like 10 pounds every week to make 116, and it just kind of broke me mentally. I had a job. I didn't have a car, so it was just it was just a lot of things that I didn't really put into consideration that would happen being on my own, and I was just in a relationship that wasn't healthy for me, and I felt like I was losing who I really was. I was getting into a lot of trouble, so I felt like I needed to come home to kind of reevaluate my life and see, like, just have more hope, you know, I was, I was fighting depression, I had an eating disorder, I wasn't eating, I wasn't sleeping, I was just so, like, in my own little, like, misery, but I was able to, like, get out of it, and even before coming to church, like, I was starting to get better, but there was always just something missing, it wasn't until I invited Christ into back to, back to my life, and just started being, I just, like, everything just started changing, like, I began to feel more hopeful, <laughs> So after you rededicated your life to Jesus, after girls invited you here, what changes you started to see in your life? 
my spiritual um, life started to get better. I, everything I've prayed for just kind of just falls into place. I wanted to go back to school, back to college in Russell in Canada. And, you know, I really wanted to go there, but I prayed about it. And I was just like, if I don't get accepted there, I have all these other options. So I'm like, like, yeah, that's my plan. I want to go there. But like God's plan is greater than mine. And he said not to go to Canada and to stay home. <laughs> Well, we, we love that you stayed here with us. You also mentioned to me earlier that you were struggling with unforgiveness and feelings of bitterness and resentment. How do you feel right now? I feel like I'm so liberated with every like person that has hurt me. Like either if it was my stepdad, my biological dad, you know, friends, just people who, or even just past like relationships with guys, like I've forgiven everyone for hurting me and I feel so like, just, I don't have any ties with anyone. I don't hate anyone. I like, even if someone who has hurt me before and they were to like, just come into my life, I wouldn't like push them away. I would, you know, I would want to know and wish them the best. That's all. Okay. And what about, um, What about your college situation right now? I know you mentioned some uh, financial even breakthroughs that you received after you decided, after you were not accepted to go to the college in Canada. What happened? Um, I just applied at CBC and at first I was struggling with my financial aid. Um, I wasn't really sure if I was going to like get it paid for, but I ended up um, applying and it kind of took, a, it was kind of a process, you know, I was just praying about it, not trying to panic. And then last minute, um, not only did they provide me with financial aid they also gave me money back that I don't have to pay so I'm just saving it to pay off my debt for the previous college awesome. let's put our hands together for Jesus we thank God for these amazing breakthroughs and changes that God has done in your life but would you please tell a word of advice to people who may be struggling with um, rededicating their lives to Jesus Christ can you say a word of advice to them I feel like rededicating my life to Christ was one of the best things I ever did. And with that, I just kind of, I just feel like a weight has been lifted off my shoulders. I feel like I belong. I feel like I can make a difference. Like, I feel like even though I'm struggling right now, like just that, like just that I'm always around people who like, who need help, like, it just makes me feel so much better. So if you're struggling with your faith, if you're struggling with anything, I advise you just to pray and just to like, just to seek someone because there's always someone listening. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mary Lou. Thank you. What an amazing testimony.